Yo, everyone, this is Sun Choi, that's Neil, and this is Parker. We're here with the Atlanta Hustle for our first ever podcast. That's, that's all I got. <laughs> I can't top that. So, yeah, here we are with uh, Sun Choi and Parker Bray. Uh, why don't you go ahead and explain to everybody why you're in the same room in front of a Christmas tree? So, well, yeah, for COVID's sake, we are roommates. We are not breaking anything. Hey, buddy. Uh, we are not breaking protocol there, but Sun and I have lived together since July. I moved in with him when he bought this place. And Christmas, you know, we're just trying to provide a little sense of normalcy for ourselves. The cat apparently likes knocking over ornaments and drinking Christmas tree water, so it works out for him too. And whose cat is it? It's Parker's cat. I mean, we co-parent. It, yeah. It's ours, but when I eventually leave Sun's abode, I will take the cat with me. All right, cool. Well, it seems like you guys have made a nice little uh, household here in, in COVID and trying to weather the storm as best you can. What else have you been doing since the, uh, the season got canceled to uh, you know, stay active or just stay engaged with life? Yeah, I mean, um, we've been playing disc golf a lot. Parker plays considerably more than me. Um, but generally, we hang out a decent amount. We'll watch movies, cook together, um, play ball golf, play disc golf, uh, still playing gold tee. And uh, Parker will, when I can wake up early enough, uh, just beat my butt in tennis just early in the morning. So I get to start my day off with just a big fat L. <laughs> yeah, it's really nice living right <laughs> across the street from the park. We've got the tennis courts just a couple hundred yards away. So it's a good excuse for us to get out, you know, get your mind right before starting the work day, get outside these four walls. Mm -hmm. Now it was like 35 degrees out this morning. Y'all still went out there and played tennis? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> got, out, got out to Perkerson today and it was quite windy, but mm -hmm. I did not brave the cold this morning. Cool. So how are your bodies doing with, the uh, you know, extended period off? It's been pretty good. Um, I've been taking up a little hobby at rock climbing a little bit. There's like a place close by, um, you know, we'll still be active. Uh, I'll definitely go and throw the disc around with people. Uh, I think we still have some like workouts, um, with, you know, people on the hustle. So we'll go out and do that. Um, doing that stretching yoga. Yeah, just trying to treat the body right, just like everyone else is kind of echoed, you know, enjoying the time off to get strong, to heal, to not have all that impact on the joints. You know, me in particular, this is two years post ACL surgery now, so my body is very happy for the time off and not having to think about rushing back into things. His throws are looking real nice. Man, I haven't picked up yeah. in some time. <laughs> Talking about his disc golf throws? <laughs> yeah, oh, they're clean. Cool. All right. Well, that, that brings me to the, you know, question is, is, you know, Parker, you said recently that you're not a handler any, anymore. What, where are you playing next year? Uh, I, uh, I'm going to cop out and just say, I want to be healthy, Bozy. That's, that's all I, <laughs> I'm going to cop out with that. But no, I, you know, I'm, I consider myself a thrower, not a handler. That term seems kind of aged at this point. You know, it seems that a lot of ultimate players are moving towards these hybrids or positionless players. Um, but yeah, I like to get, I'd like to get back to my roots of getting downfield. Uh, you know, with some of these additions we've got to the roster, it's going to free me up to operate downfield, hopefully flex a little athleticism, turn the legs and then, yeah, you know, get an under and be attacking with those throws. But yeah, I, I don't like to be confined in that little five by five box behind the disc. It's too creative for that. <laughs> Gotta let the peacock fly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so uh, a lot of other folks that I uh, talked to have, you know, called your name out as someone they're excited about uh, playing with this year or getting back um, with the new additions or just, you know, you getting on the field for the first time. Who are you excited to get some reps with in 2021? Uh, well, I, so an old, or I guess a returning player that whom I haven't shared the field with who had a, a breakout season uh, during my ACL recovery was Eli Jaime. I would love to get downfield with that guy. He sees space really well. He attacks just any kind of unoccupied space. And so I, I haven't shared the field with him. I'm excited to see what Eli's all about. And obviously the splashy signing is Antoine. And I've joked with some people, if, if that guy's on the other end of my hooks, my turnover rate goes way down. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> it'd be hard to out throw that guy from the film I have watched. So uh, excited, excited to play with Antoine and Eli uh, specifically. How about you, son? 
Um, well, always looking forward to play with uh, my best friend, JP. Um, we haven't shared a line since, I think, 2018 or 17. So it'd be good to, you know, you know, get some reps in with him. We've been playing college and as long as I can remember. So just love that guy. Uh, definitely other notables are Jakeem. I mean, that dude is a defensive monster. We've seen him get up. Uh, love to share some, some field time with him, get, see his, some of his nasty blocks. Um, and who else would be, I think Brett, Brett, um, I think at the hustle tryouts, he, he was showing a lot of improve from last year. And I mean, dude's a big guy. So like definitely being able to throw some sky balls to him will be nice. Sounds good. Yeah. I'd love to get the opportunity to throw some sky balls to those guys too, but you know, tight, <laughs> maybe. no, you can't, that's all for you. <laughs> all right. So you mentioned that you, you like to cook. It's something that you guys do together. Um, you know, since COVID has happened and we're all have more time on our hands. Uh, I'm curious to know a little bit about what kind of stuff you cook, what your, what your strengths are, you know, who does what in the kitchen and perhaps maybe this could be a cooking show that, that comes about on this channel. Who knows? That'd be when in, yeah. the, in the kitchen with Parker and Son. Yeah. And kitchen. Neil? And Neil. Uh, I would say our staple dish is a chi chicken tikka masala. Uh, that is That makes its way into the rotation pretty much every week, or at least every other week. Um, but in terms of, like, rolls in the kitchen, we typically don't cook hand-in-hand, hand per se. It's usually, all right, who's got dinner tonight, which is really nice because it frees up the other one, you know, to – maybe get outside and enjoy a little daylight and have dinner waiting on them when they get back. Um, but I'd say that's our, that's our staple dish. Son is truly the cook. He has inspired me. He's taught me a lot about how to use a Dutch oven and mm -hmm. different terminology like fond and the uh, Meyer and, reaction. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, so it's been fun to learn from son. Um, but I think son's got some, I got exciting a, dish he's gonna cook soon or oh something. yeah um so one of the holiday things i'm gonna try and do is uh make cookies and i know that doesn't sound super sexy right now but it's a 48 hour cookie so you let the uh, dough rest for 24 hours and then you bake it so it's supposed to like add like deepen the flavor of the dough which will be pretty cool um i think kind of segueing off of the the teaching stuff i remember uh parker when he was making the chicken tikka masala we were making rice and I, I think I was just like helping make the rice and stuff. Oh. And I washed the rice like four or five times, like drain it, get all like the starch off the rice. And Parker's like, what are you doing? And I was like, oh no, dude, it'll, it'll help. Like it'll make the rice softer and everything. And he was just like, yo, I don't know what you did to this rice, <laughs> but it is a game changer. And I remember him calling his brother and telling him <laughs> that he needed to wash his rice before he cooked it. Well, it's just like, I never thought that rice could pop. You know, it's almost like a, just a carb you throw in there. Like bread is just a, a vessel for whatever you're trying to put in the middle. You know, rice is just taking the flavor of whatever else is with it. But no, son told me about washing the rice and putting butter in it and it just the rice actually pops it keeps better in terms of leftovers i mean it's just it's fantastic i swear by it now i tell everyone now about washing your rice like you need to do this. you need to take the two minutes to wash your rice before throwing it in the rice cooker also rice cooker mm -hmm. always rice cooker don't do it on a stove top a rice cooker is like one of the best thirty dollar investments yeah you yeah. i'm with it on that one yeah yeah uh, i've been making uh i made sliders one time <laughs> Um, yeah, so I've been trying to like eat a little bit more uh, vegetarian, not for any particular reason, just seeing how it worked. And I got this like plant based uh, meat product. And I just made like a chopped cheese sandwich with it and um, turned out really well and very excited about it. Um, but yeah. yeah, we rotate through like a couple dishes a week, we'll cook that, uh, make some like tortellini pasta stuff Parker's really good at. And um, yeah, I think I've made the chicken tikka masala a couple times. That was pretty cool uh, watching Parker make that. So, all right. So, if Parker's cooking for you and you get to pick what he cooks, what are you choosing? Ooh, that's a tough one. Um, he's gonna say he's gonna he's gonna crack a joke and say rice and beans. <laughs> <laughs> Parker's staple throughout the week. Sorry, side note. I've seen Parker eat the same thing week in and week out every time. <laughs> it is amazing. He'll eat the same thing for lunch, which is like hummus. Wheat thins and like sandwich meats, and then for dinner it's and either cheese. oh and cheese, sorry and cheese, and then it'll be like macaroni or rice and beans for dinner. Like this man is a machine. Hey, the body appreciates regularity, <laughs> and uh, I stay on top of it. I'm a little robotic, like when it comes to that. 
it's also not nice just not to have to think about what you're going to make, you know, for breakfast and lunch every morning. And mm. body likes it. It's good nutrients. Huh? Whatever. I got that from you, Kyle. That Thanks a lot, buddy. Yeah. Man Kyle that Stapleton. <laughs> yeah. The man that eats spaghetti noodles raw. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, think if I, could choose, I think if I could choose any dish that Parker would make, it would definitely be his, like, tortellini uh, pasta dish. I mean, that thing is so good. It's, yeah, it's got turkey sausage in there and some spinach, mushrooms, whatever kind of veggies you want to, you want to throw in there with, yeah, just like a little red sauce with some heat. That's pretty good. All right. And then we'll we always get these flaky, we always get these flaky biscuits too. Oh yeah. We got these awesome little flaky biscuits and just dap them up with butter. Also another food plug. You have to get land of lakes. Please sponsor us. <laughs> sea salt and olive oil butter. My goodness. It's candy. Oh, yeah. It's so good. I think I've seen Parker just grab a spoonful and eat it. loves <laughs> <laughs> his butter. Well, as J.P. Burns said, we're trying to put weight back on, still trying to put weight back on from the surgery. When he said that his nutritionist told him, if you ever feel like you are just full and you can't eat any- anymore, just start slapping butter on things. Yeah. And I have sworn by that. All right. Well, it doesn't look like – you know, you're having an issue with too much butter. I mean, you look, you look trim and fit in that Atlanta heckle shirt. So, you know, and it's December. You know, pretty- All right. So same it's question similar. for you. If son's cooking, what do you want him to make? Oh man. If son's cooking. I want him to make those sliders he talked about. Uh, yeah. It's just like a little impossible meat or something with some caramelized onion and another veggie and some cheese. And he puts it on a Hawaiian sweet roll bun. And it is just, it, it's delightful. I don't know. <laughs> it just melts in your mouth. It's so good. He, he, he's a wizard with the uh, cast iron skillet. All right. Well, if there are any people still watching, you need to follow up <laughs> <laughs> with some photos. <photographic laughs> You gotta go to the cooking show. So we can, yeah, we can post them in our story and be like, for the five of you that watched all the way through to the end, <laughs> i love you mom she'll be watching all right all right uh, mom still hates that i play frisbee sorry mom <laughs> hey one out of two is not bad <laughs> two out of three ain't bad meatloaf there's another food plug but uh, <laughs> <laughs> heard this song busy huh have you heard this song two out of three ain't bad oh okay Aww. I'm not sure. No, I don't know the reference. I was thinking of the... Because, baby, I want you. I want you. I need you. I need you. But ain't no way I'm ever gonna love you. Now, don't be sad. Don't be sad. Because two out of three ain't bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a classic. Come on. Come on. Please do that. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go look it up. Sorry. Uh, yeah. That's sort of off the rails. We warned you. <laughs> you know, hey. It's cool. The outtakes for this is going to be probably the, you know, the better than the actual thing. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> huh. All right, fellas. Well, I miss you guys. It's great to talk to you. And I'm obviously super excited to be on the field or to see you on the field because, you know, I don't get to be out there for, you know. Hey, you it up one time. Yeah, yeah, you know, every every five years or so, I get out on the field. There's videotape somewhere, <laughs> emergency situations. But I'm hoping the roster is looking it's looking really good this year. So it's going to be a big time emergency if I'm going to have to put on my cleats. <laughs> Let's hope that doesn't happen. We had enough emergencies this year, but yeah, super excited for 2021. Super excited to see you guys in the same room at some point soon. Uh, yeah, man, have a great holiday. Talk to you soon. Yes. Thanks, Happy Buzz. holiday, Buzz. Happy holidays.